Alright, so we're here to talk about the Amazon Paperwhite. And this isn't going to be covering every single aspect of the Paperwhite because there are a lot of good reviews out here uh, on that subject matter. Um, what I want to talk about are some shortcomings that I had with the device. So um, let's talk about the pros first of all. The, um, the font looks really good and it's a top lit device so uh, essentially you don't have glare and you can read under any, uh, any lighting circumstances which is great. Some of the folks that talked uh, about the Kindle uh, before had talked about a bleed which you, you can probably see up here where the channels are and it's not a huge deal when you're reading um, in portrait because well, primarily you know I tend to not get to the end of the page there but you can really see the bleed kind of here in portrait on a landscape at the top and at the side there and, and the reason for that is the fact that it's a top lit device and uh, so you have light piping in through these channels and I believe they say it's sandwiched in between the screen so that uh, it's not a backlit device and that's what helps you to not have the glare uh, so I could live with that that's not a huge deal I'm okay with that. Reading PDFs here is going to be challenging. When you email the PDFs, and this is a free PDF that I got, uh, when you email the PDFs, it doesn't really do a good job of converting them. Uh, unlike Word documents, which look excellent uh, when it converts them to the Kindle, I don't see a way here to zoom other than this pinching and as you can see when you scroll down you only get the page that you're on then you have to go to the next page and you know some folks who say they don't mind zooming I read you know 800 page documents I don't want to have to zoom all the time alright so now I've got an example of a word document and once again this would look a lot better in, in uh, portrait mode it's just it's easier to video and landscape so here, you know, th this looks really good. I, I like the way that the font looks. Of course, you can go in to your um, device and uh, I want to say you can change the fonts, but I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe you can't on the Word documents, but, but as you can see, I mean, the fonts look really good anyways. It did a really good job of converting them, so you don't really need to change the fonts on this. So I would say if you're primarily reading Word documents, if you're not interested in PDFs, and if you're buying most of your books on the Kindle Store, uh, this is a really good device, probably the best reading device out there. Uh, so I'm going to show you one other thing that I attempted to do, and, um, and it might work well for Word documents. Um, however, it didn't seem to work too well for the PDFs. All right, so basically, um, you know, there are times like, for instance, I bought the Kindle edition of this book, and uh, for $5 more, I could get the unlocked one so I could read it on the computer and whatnot. And there are other times when I'll purchase books like from Inform at IT that are coming in the straight in the PDF document. And of course, another option is that sometimes I'll download something like this document from Veeam. So what we're going to attempt to do here, and I've done this once before with uh, very little results, but uh, we'll give this a shot. is we can take these documents and we can uh, and we can try to convert them with I don't know how to say it but C A L I B R E and there's page structure detection table of contents um haven't had a lot of luck but basically under page setup we can go in and we're going to say Kindle White uh, provide default input and it's going to go through the queue basically and we can see the queue here you know it's just going to go through and convert the documents is we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook up the Kindle and now you'll notice that we have our Mobi format for the Kindle uh, Windows Server 2008 
And uh, wh what's neat about this um, application is, it, you know, it just detected the device here, so we can go down and uh, actually um, we can right click and uh, we can do send the device somehow. Here we go. Uh, so we send to the main memory. And I may have just grabbed the wrong document. So let's make sure I got the right one. We're going to send the main memory. This is the one with the Mobi. Uh, we're still converting the rest of the documents. All right, so let's open up our converted PDF. This one actually doesn't look bad compared to the other one uh, that I did previously. And I think part of the hang up that I had though is it didn't get the index properly on the first attempt of this. So, you know, we can go to page location or whatnot, but. And there, there may be ways for advanced people to go and actually find the table of contents or create one, but for me this just seems like a lot of trouble to make this device read PDFs and or converted PDFs. So the verdict for me is I'm out on the PDFs for this. So now that we're encoding our documents, I just want to uh, move on to Kindle for the iPad. And uh, one of my frustrations with it is when you zoom a document in, you can read that entire page. And then when you click over to the next page, it zooms it back out again. So that's pretty annoying. Um, I read books that have lots and lots of um, pages, hundreds, maybe thousand pages. And there's no way that I'm going to do that every time. But, I mean, if you have better vision than I do, this small font size might be okay for you. Uh, to me, it's, it's kind of uh, a little smaller, and, you know, since this is a Kindle application, I would like to be able to resize fonts in the way that I can do so with uh, Word documents and other things. So uh, here's an example of a Word document that I sent to the iPad. And it does a lot better job of getting some of the, um, um, I don't know, the special characters and the notes and things that the Kindle, uh, Kindle white paper, whatever it's called, paper white, um, couldn't do. But you'll notice it's backlit and it does have a glare. And, of course, what I love about this is that it does convert the Word documents in such a way that you can resize them so you really get a good Kindle-like feel with the... Uh, with the Word documents. Um, but, I mean, the page is a little washed, it's backlit, a little glare, so uh, depending upon what you're doing, it can be, um, oh well, you know, depending upon what you're reading, for instance, it can make a huge difference um, in certain kinds of lighting, maybe in an office space and whatnot. You know, I don't have any overhead light on right now, so this is the Kindle. And uh, it's probably the exact Word document here that we were looking at. So the Kindle does have its advantages. So see here we got little question marks on the on the that what would be these blocks here on the iPad. All right, so we're going to switch over to the PC for a minute, and uh, we've got our same documents here. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy them over to the iPad. So we're going to plug the iPad in. And it's going to start synchronizing. And here's our PDF books. So click on our exam reference. At a glance, the font's a little better than the Kindle was, which would make sense because this is an iPad, but still in all, we've got that same issue to where when we zoom the page in, you know, it doesn't, doesn't save. Uh, and for folks like me, 
that just have slightly bad eyesight, that's not going to cut it. And I also have this PDF Reader Pro, which I've purchased in the past. So let's go ahead and copy those books up there as well. And then we'll synchronize. All right, so now that we've copied our PDFs to the iPad, we're going to come over to the PDF Reader. And we can select our document. And a nifty trick here that you can use on the iPad, which makes it it and the Kindle Fire um, the better options for reading PDFs, the Kindle Fire HD, is you can zoom in your font to bleed at the edge, basically. And then what that's going to do for you is as you scroll the PDF down, it's going to keep that formatting and give you the larger text that I desire when reading uh, PDF files. Here's we've got Safari online, and uh, Safari is really nice. You can uh, read your books uh, online, or you can cache three of your ten books that you've um, checked out for the month to the iPad, and then read on the go. Uh, the photos zoom in really well, then you can hit done. And on the iPad, you can read very comfortably by clicking left or right. Uh, not quite as good on the on the PC or the Kindle, I've noticed. And uh, recently something similar has come out on Android, but for a while I didn't even find anything like this for uh, Android. So, you can load your PDF and it'll scan it. About the author Mitch Tulloch is and it a reads it to expert you. Of delivers value for cloud computing chapter 1. 13 Windows Server 2012 also provides numerous efficiency. 2012 Primer so the, the read aloud option uh, also works on the iPhone. Uh, so that's another way to take a smaller device and uh, go ahead and, and make it a reader. All right, so it looks like uh, just like with our iBooks, in order to copy up PDFs, we just simply use iTunes. All right, so uh, if you go to View, which is a funny place for this, but you go to View and read aloud, uh, this is going to be very similar to what I showed you on the tablet, except in my opinion, I like it a little bit better. So, there's different ways you can read. You can do a text block like this. Before we get started, it is 3.0. And you can hit the keyboard down. Flavors. Microsoft offers a standalone version. That'll get annoying, of course. Uh, so, Control Shift V will read the page. Control Shift B sometimes will read the entire document. Uh, depending upon how the OCR is handled on the divide, on the uh, PDF, you might get blank, 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 or it may not read a page. But by and large, I'd say 80% of the time, this works great. Uh, what I love to do is just sit there, and uh, I'll be at work, and I'll be multitasking and typing or working on a project, and then I can listen to PDFs. So since we're including PCs as book readers, I just wanted to show you what the Safari books online and the Kindle application look like on a PC. So when it comes to Safari, you just log into the website and as you can see you get a similar view to what you got before on the Kindle except we have this bar on the side that allows us to go from one page to the next to read. And I imagine if this is a Windows 8 tablet, you know, we could just touch like we do on the on the iPad. And this is a pretty nice feature set. You can go and 
Uh, check your books out down to your device, which is pretty slick. Uh, so you can you can um, read them offline. I think I might have mentioned that earlier, but you can have up to three of those, and you can have ten books out per month, ten tokens, and you can take a look at what's on your bookshelf. Seven more available. Go to favorites and folders. These are the books that I'm reading currently. Now, as far as Kindle goes, we kind of have the same options here. We've got the ability to download our books that we purchased from Kindle. This is a Mobi that, so in this uh, example, this is a book I purchased from Kindle. This is a Mobi that I purchased from uh, Manning Publications, and they allow me to uh, read it on the Kindle. So that's actually... Um, a DRM free book and all I had to do is email it to the address that Amazon gives me.